Hello YouTube, Kidup165 here, and as you saw in the intro today, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be showing you how to service a ring fuel motor on a double O gauge model. So firstly, before you do anything, I recommend you get these at minimum. A type of solvent, it may say that, but it's a solvent inside of it. A type of oil with a drip. I use a piece of wire because it works the same. A lot of cotton buds and various screwdrivers preferably Phillips and flat blades all of these will come in use towards this video so I hope you find this video like a bit of a lesson in case you don't know how to service types of ring for your motors so let's get started shall we right so firstly what you want to do is take a look at the model itself so this is the Manchester Regiment by Mainline there you go. I believe mainline is related to Backman, Backman trains. And as you can see here, it's got a bit of, it's got some weights inside of it. So firstly, let's have a look for screws to remove the body. Now as you can see, it has screws on the wheels, but it doesn't have any to the actual body itself. The second thing to look out for are clips. This is a clip. It holds the body in without the use of any screws. Quite simple for production purposes. So just give me a minute and I'll have the body off real quick. I'm back and as you'll notice the Deltic is looking a bit different because now I have successfully removed the body. So as you can see there, these are the small holes that it would clip onto. It would have two at either end. And as you can see on the actual chassis here, it would have these little clips here, which is what held the body on. So now we're going to put the body aside and out of the way so it doesn't get damaged because now it's a bit dangerous normally you would use a servicing cradle to keep the body safe and out the way however i do not have one so i'm leaving it at the back out the way if you do have a servicing cradle really use that it protects the body perfectly so we are presented here with just the chassis of the diesel you can see it's got weights that's what these are they just play the act of weight they don't actually conduct electricity you got two wires one going to the motor and to the other chassis and here is the motor now as you can see this motor is very small considering what the diesel actually is it is a ring field motor but the true actual name for it is called a pod motor these are smaller types of ring field motors which i must say i don't really think suits this model well and if we have a look here these are the important parts these are the brush and springs terminals these will be removed after when we get to it in this video right so first we need to disconnect this end I've already been in here before and because I did not know how to solder back then I have done this this is a wire connector you just press the points down like this and the wires come out that's one wire disconnected and I don't think we'll be able to do the other one annoyingly however I do believe we can remove it by doing this end so the next step for this engine is to remove the front chassis you can do this by prying the motor out of the clips on either side now normally for other diesels the motor would have a slightly different mounting so basically the next step remove the motor from the chassis body if you will right i'll do that and i'll see you in a minute one quick thing i forgot to mention is that on this diesel in particular this was connected to the motor this is a little bracket that helps it stay in the chassis so before you force your motor out of the chassis make sure to remove any parts that would be holding it in through a screw if it's just clips then lean them back with a flat blade but if there's any clips like this that has a screw in them remove them first because you could potentially break the model so now that the body is ready to be removed, well the chassis body is ready to be removed from the motor, we put this little part that I mentioned earlier over here with the body out the way. And now, the chassis just peels away. There you go. Again, this is only done to get easier access to the pod motor here. And this is going to be a little awkward to go on camera. So basically, now that we have access to the pod motor, we don't need to take it apart anymore where the actual frame is concerned. However, what we do need to do is remove these two here. Let me see if I can get this closer. So what these two are, 
These are where the springs and brushes are held to connect to the motor. These are very vital and important for the motor to work at all. What we need to do is remove these screws and take them out. Because when a motor runs for so long, it builds up a lot of carbon. And when it builds up a lot of carbon, the electricity can't conduct through anymore. Which is why we do routine servicing. A lot of people don't do this and end up putting their models on eBay. Which is how I got this model. This model was a non-runner and was picked up really cheap. All I did was this simple task I'm showing you today and it works again. However, like most models, it needs maintenance. Which is what this video is for. So what I'm going to do now is remove these and explain what I do with the springs. It's a bit hard to see but I've just re re removed the screws. So here you go, here's one and it's wire. The wire seems to want to come with it. So here is one screw. I don't know if the camera's going to focus in on that. And we're going to put that at the back too. And we're going to remove this red wire because it's already disconnected. And now we're going to remove this panel too. And you, as you can see the spring is already coming out. It, be very careful when doing this step because these springs if you lose them and you can't seem to find them then you're in trouble because like I said earlier it can't run without them so putting that screw back and now this is removed we can now access fully the pod motor so as you can see here it's just come out this is one spring this is one little spring that's used in the motor there is two in total and as you can see how small it is to my thumb this is tiggy so this needs to be protected at all costs and I'll explain how to clean these later so I'm gonna put this back with the other parts over here now I've got to remove the other spring and the two brushes and now that the screws are removed off these these just come off the plate has just fallen actually into it yeah, it's inside, I'll get that in a minute. The other one comes off too, but because this is by mainline, you might need to pry them off. And it's off. And as you could see there, there's no spring because the spring fell out. This is why I say, always be careful of the springs lose them you need to buy replacements i think they are cheap off of ebay but yeah you just don't want to lose them at all and it looks like the caps have fallen out these are what would hold the spring and brushes in we need to clean them too so they can go back over here and last but not least we have the carbon brushes just tap the end a little bit and there we go one's already out all this is, is a simple cylinder of carbon. These will go behind the springs in the motor itself where those holes are. These again need cleaning, so put them with the parts. And there's one more left, it seems to be a little bit stuck though, so there you go, it's out. And that's it, that's all the parts necessary. I believe there is one more thing we need to do and it's with this motor itself. We need to get the commutator clean. The commutator is where the springs and the brushes touch to make the motor go however to access this we've got to pry the motor out of this frame so i'll do that real quick and we'll do that first so i'm back and the chassis and the motor has been removed so this this alone is what drives that big delta and we've just sourced this out within about less than 10 minutes so now what we need to do is a bit hard to see but behind the wheels there are two well one screw there and one screw on the other side that will reveal the front compartment and the commutator. I'm just going to do that now. Quick side note, just to make sure that you can remove the wheels before you do this, because look how many cogs are in this. And like I said, any part that comes off, put them aside. You don't want to lose them. So it turns out these wheels were just clipped into this chassis. So I've ended up having to remove both wheel sets which also have traction tires and this is a warning for anyone who's new to traction tires do not put oil grease or solvent on the traction tires the reason for this is because they are made of rubber and any of these substances could have a chance of making them expand i did that once on accident to a model and ended up with the traction tire expanding and falling off rendering it utterly useless and ever since i couldn't find a replacement it's because it's a retired model so please keep any solvents and liquids away from traction tires just for your own benefit 
So both of these wheels have traction tires and things like that, so we're going to put them to the back. As well as these little cogs here, these also have to be removed to access the screws, which are here. So now on camera this time, just easy to do, we're going to pry these out by unscrewing them. By the way, whilst I'm doing this, I might as well tell you, I have plans for a new type of video next. I'm going to be doing a running session on my layout next, which will be quite interesting. Comment below if you want Thomas and Friends or live Steam, well, real life engines. Or both, it's up to you. But I'd love to see what you guys would want me to do. After all, you're the viewers. Right, so now that those two screws are out, we can put them over here. And now, the front should pop off. Or the back, one of the sides should. Right, give me a minute, I'll figure it out. And here you have it, folks, we have accessed the commutator here. So as you can see, you've got the remaining gears and the well-oiled, and this is the motor that we needed in the first place. So now, just remove the cogs necessary. We'll just remove this one because we don't need it in at, at the minute. And now, you have the commutator. So as you can see here, it's a bit hard to see, but it is a tad bit dirty, but I have seen worse. And for some reason, the copper is white on the other side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean this commutator. What we do is we get our solvent that I mentioned earlier and we get a few cotton buds. And what we do is we dip it in the solvent and just clean round. I can do that now actually. And also, what we also clean as well is the springs and brushes. What you can do is you can dump them into the solvent and leave it there. I'll do that now. So one brush, two brush, a spring, one spring going under the delta body and the other spring right so that now here is going to clean those whilst we work you dip your cotton bud in get your commutator you just clean it around a few times and it's a bit hard to see on camera but it is cleaning off the gunk this is done so the electricity can conduct easier again make it easier for them all to run just give it around a few times till you feel like it's satisfactory and what you can also do is put the solvent on the copper wires too in case you feel these need a clean I don't think it makes much of a difference but I don't see why you can't do it and maybe bringing back some of that copper is good I mean look at that all that black is what I got off this in one go if you do it on your model and you find it hasn't been serviced in a while you'll be surprised you'll have to go for a lot more cotton buds than just the one I'm using but this is why it's important to service your engines. They'll last longer and they'll be more reliable. Bear in mind, I don't have an instruction sheet doing this. This is what I've done from experience where it comes to these models and servicing them. So the motor is satisfactory now. I believe that would run really well. So here's the fun part. You gotta rebuild it. So this mode, this ring field just slots back in. There you go. And if you're wondering why it's moving a little weird, it's because these are magnets on either side. These are what's required for the motor to move at all. So now we get our big cog that we had earlier, and we put that in the right way that it did earlier. And there you go, it's in. This piece slots over and clips in. There you go. So I'll just I've got to put the screws back in here. This is why I said keep all the parts separate so you can just reach for them whenever necessary. Go put these back in the awl. And screw them in. If I don't drop the screwdriver that is. I'll come back to you once it's done. Now that the cogs have been fitted, it's time to oil them up. So one little trick I've been taught, and this is where the oil comes in, don't always use too much oil. So as you can see, I use the free one oil. It's perfect stuff for this type of servicing. What you do is you get a bit of wire with a drop of oil on it, so much that you can't see it, and you just put it on the cogs. You don't need too much. You just need a, enough, in my opinion. Because if you over oil a model, it actually reduces its running. So I'm just gonna do three drops over the entire gear chain, and that'll be enough for it to run really good again. So now that that's done, oh and by the way, if you do accidentally get any liquid on your traction tires, 
older models they don't seem to expand as much but what i would do just to be on the safe side is rub over the traction tires with a cotton bud and try and get as much off as possible so now this is actually done next i say we clean this out so again you don't actually need solvent to do this you just cotton bud it or any fabric you have because the more grease you get away it's just better for the engine overall And there you go, look at that. All that was just in here. Just me going like this. Once that's done, you get your chassis. And you just clip it back in. It's a bit stiff, but it has to be. But there you go, that's that done. That is the commutator cleaned and ready for the brushes, which is what we're gonna do next. So the brushes are in here, they've been soaking for a while. Let me just fish them out. And here they are, they've been cleaned. Oh one fella so yeah all these have now been cleaned and they're so hard to see man but they have been cleaned if you want to just give them a one over with the cotton brush after they've been in the solvent then go ahead the reason why the solvent is good to do this by the way is because the solvent cleans it but then evaporates into the air so it's completely non-toxic if you don't take big gulps of it i guess but it also cleans things really well so what you do is you put the brushes into here first. It's going to be very hard for me to do this on camera. Because they're very well fitted brushes. One actually fell into the gap here. So I've got one in. Just go do the other now. Right, there we go. The other one went in a bit better. And as you can see, they are in there now. And now what we've got to do is take our brushes and push them into it. Right, that's one. Oh. The thing is, the brushes won't stay in very well, so I've got to do this sideways. Oh. Yeah, do you get what I mean? It's going to be... I've got to do this sideways somehow. But actually, give me a minute. I know what I'll do. So hopefully this will be a little bit easier. So I have the brushes here, and the springs are already in. What I'm going to do is take one of the remaining screws I have left. I'm going to poke it through the wire that we had earlier. So it's ready to connect to the pickups from earlier and then I'm going to pick up one of these plates now you can do this before or after, um, preferably before but if you clean the plate it conducts a little better this one is already quite clean as you can see and then what you do is you get your spring this is where it gets fiddly by the way it's easier to take these apart than to rebuild them so yeah once the spring is in place you carefully fit this plate over the top of the spring and screw it in at the same time and you can see how fiddly it is because I'm struggling here with both hands all right there we go it's in I've trapped it there you go so now that's in I just get me screwdriver and tighten now on most diesels in today's standards they use can motors on a lot of them and cam motors don't have this type of design instead they have oh, sorry they have these longer brushes that are sprung i will learn um, service a cam motor if um, you like this type of content because um if i can help anybody who wants to service a model train then sure i will because i do these i do this a lot i service a lot of engines because i have about 30 in my collection and trust me they range from years ago Right, so I've got the other one now. Now, the problem is, this one is stuck to the body. But the frame. So I've got to try and do this with the wire here, if you get what I mean. So, I'll give it my best shot. So, like I said, spring. And you can just shove the cover on, but then you've got to hold it in place, which reduces an and. And then the spring just flaps out. Ooh. Right, so the spring is trapped. Got this random metal piece here. Line up the holes. Get the screw. Thread it through both, which it is. Excellent. And then, tighten. So, I may make it look easy, because I do it a lot. 
but trust me this is actually harder than you think i've been doing for video time i've done it for ages now right so there we go that is in and technically that will work now so now it's a case of putting it back together and cleaning the pickups so what you do is you thread this back through there you go and it's right way up again just clip it down so the clips in and then we bring back this that i mentioned earlier which helps it lock in place i'm sorry if the camera keeps going blurry i don't know why it does that so basically on the motor there is a little hole right here yeah right here and this has a little slot for a hole so what i do is i remove the screw just to make my life easier slot this in and then put the screw in and this will help keep the motor in place and falling out when it runs around the layout and there we go it's in that's fixed in now and it's fully serviced ready to run again now technically we can test this without servicing the pickups however let's just do it for the sake of it so in this axle let's see if it can be removed it, it's not easily removable actually i don't know it's got clips at the top let me just see in. there you go i've removed it now if you're wondering why the green wire is out um, that's just from the white connection so in here there are two pickups on either side now i don't think they need cleaning because they still work but the wheels might need cleaning too so basically you take your solvent again and you just cotton bud it where it needs to be and on the wheels too so i'll just do that real quick so now that that's done we can refit it so make sure that the green wire is going through the top hole there we go and just push the clips through sometimes you do have to be a little bit forceful on these models and then using my special clip i'll just clip them back up it seems like a bit of wire has come out of these normally for a better wire solder these because it's 10 times better than doing it this way oh this is actually lost this wire all right give me a minute i'll cut that back there we go cut it back and there you go and there you go done so now this is ready to run it's fully serviced fully well done so now we can fit the body back on safely knowing that this is a fully serviced model you get your body and due to the nature of how this body is built it will fit either way so we'll put it the motor at the back make sure all the wires are tucked in all on well and good make sure the body actually goes on there we go and clip done We've successfully serviced this engine. So now let's go give it a test run on the layout, shall we? Sorry, one more thing I forgot to mention is, and this is vitally important, which I'm surprised I forgot it. Always oil your wheels. So take the same oil that I did earlier and just put a drop of oil on every wheel. A bit like this. Just something simple and easy. Not overdoing it though because like i said less oil is better but you need the oil at the same time so yeah just repeat that on your model and then we can test it for good now here's the manchester regiment in all its glory and now we're going to test it with 12 volts on the outer line so it's currently now going to go in reverse so let's see how well it does if i don't say myself that is a very well serviced model stop at the station and then let's go forwards there you go because it's mainline it's not a slow runner however for a service i think that's quite good so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video on how to service a mainline deltic or any ring fill motor at all so yeah i hope you enjoyed make sure to like subscribe if you want more train or serviceable content preferably thomas and friends content make sure to check out instagram and twitter and i'll see you in the next video bye